Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme So here is the summary of uh, the expressions which we have derived uh, for step response of a second order system and depending on whether we are in the regime of over damped response, critically damped response or under damped response, uh, we will get these type of responses and you can see that the nature uh, of these uh, expressions are very similar. Uh, the first term AKP gives you the ultimate value of the response. Uh, then we have a constant 1 and then we have a decaying function e raised to minus zeta t over tau and then lastly uh, we have either a hyperbolic cosine sine or a linear function 1 plus t over tau or a sinusoid of the form uh, sine of root of 1 minus zeta square t over tau plus phi. In all these cases what you should uh, notice uh, that if I take the slope of this response at time t equal to 0 that slope is going to be 0. So the response is not directly start at t equal to 0. So there will always be a 0 slope at time t equal to 0 and slowly the response will catch up. So this is again a distinguishing factor between a first and a second order response. In first order response the response directly starts with a non-zero slope at time t equal to 0 which was uh, 1 over tau and uh, in second order system the system takes little bit time to get started and that is why the initial slope is going to be 0. So now we will see how uh, these responses look like uh, with the help of the manometer example uh, that was the example we had considered as a inherently second order system and depending on the values of parameters of the manometer uh, we may have any we can make the manometer to behave as an under damped system, critically damped system or an over damped system. So let us look at it through a simulation. So let us start with how the response looks like uh, when we have uh, over damped response. So for that uh, these are the parameters of uh, the manometer and the only thing which we are going to change is the radius of that manometer. We will see that by just changing the radius of the manometer we can move it from one type of second order dynamics to the other. When we take the radius of this uh, manometer to be 1 tends to minus 4 uh, we are going to get over damped response. Uh, so let us see what are the parameters we get. We get tau is equal to um, 0.3194, uh, we have zeta which is greater than 1 which is in fact equal to 14 and the gain value is given here. In that case this tau square will be 0.1 and this the intermediate uh, term will be 0.944. So we will enter these values as a second order response system, the gain goes here, uh, this is the tau square twice zeta tau and 1. And when we see the response of the system to a step input in terms of the pressure drop, uh, we increase the pressure by this amount uh, of Pascal or 10 kilopascal. Uh, what we would get uh, is the response of the system. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, the response uh, goes from initial value to the final value. Uh, here you may not uh, be seeing uh, what is happening right in the beginning, uh, but if we zoom in. See that the response has a slight zero slope in the beginning and then slowly it kicks off. Now when we look at uh, the critically damped response, uh, in that case uh, we will be increasing the radius uh, of this uh, manometer and if the radius goes to 3.7 10 to minus 4. Uh, you will notice uh, that the damping coefficient becomes almost equal to 1, uh, the tau and kp remain the same and uh, if we put that value here,
we see that the response has sped up significantly. Uh, it looks similar to the previous response, uh, but uh, the only difference is it becomes a uh, little faster. And uh, when we look at the response uh, when zeta is less than 1, in that case uh, the radius, uh, let us say radius goes to 9 tennis to minus 4, we will see that the damping co coefficient in that case becomes 0 0.1728. And uh, when we see that the response of the system has oscillations uh, which decay over time and that is the typical response of a second order system. Okay. So this is how uh, even a single system just by changing a parameter uh, we can move from uh, over damped to critically damped to under damped. So let us now look at these responses in more detail and uh, what is the effect of uh, these parameters. So here are the responses uh, when we are in either looking at critically damped or over damped response and you can see that uh, as uh, the damping coefficient is very large the response becomes sluggish or it is more and more it is slower compared to a critically damped response. Critically damped response uh, would actually represent the fastest way to go from the original point to the final point and staying there. So this is how the response uh, would change when the damping coefficient changes. You can see that as we are reducing the damping coefficient from the value of 3, the response is getting pushed uh, towards the origin or towards the y axis. And as we move uh, past uh, zeta equal to 1 and go into zeta less than 1 territory, we will start seeing that that pushing towards the origin actually moves the response above 1. So the response is going to overshoot the value, uh, the ultimate value and what we are going to see is as the damping coefficient goes beyond the value of 1, we will have oscillations, the damping oscillations. If the zeta value is closer to 1, uh, the oscillations are not that significant. And as the damping coefficient value goes much lower below 1, you will see that the oscillations are quite significant. And we had seen last time uh, that if the, if the damping coefficient becomes 0, then these oscillations do not die and you will be getting a case of sustained oscillations. So that is how uh, these responses of a second order system uh, change as we change the damping coefficient uh, right from a very high value to a very low value close to 0. Now the second order response uh, is uh, or this uh, under damped response or critically damped response they will play a very important role when we are designing a control system. Let us say for an example uh, we want uh, this response uh, is uh, which we are seeing right now is a response uh, the, un uh, the under damped response is the response of a controller uh, which is trying to move the parameter let us say this is a scaled temperature from the original steady state value to the final steady state value which is given by the scaled value of 1. So in that case uh, what we would want uh, is the response or the controller should move the response from original value to the final value as soon as possible. Uh, we would also want uh, that uh, the value should stay there. Uh, we would also want that it should not overshoot by a large amount. So in order to do all those characterizations, uh, many a times we prefer to have an underdamped response uh, of the final system plus controller because in that case uh, what we see that uh, the response reaches 
quickly to the neighborhood of the ultimate value even though the it does not stay at the ultimate value it reaches in the neighborhood of that value much quickly compared to either critically damped or overdamped system so if when we make a change in the set point uh, the controller reacts very fast uh, it takes you very close to the final value even though it oscillates around it uh, we are still very close to that final value and uh, because of that uh, what we are going to uh, get is uh, the system will move to the new uh, stay close to the new steady state and uh, even though we have uh, some oscillations uh, there uh, we will try to minimize those so typically we would want to have an underdamped response and uh, in order to use this response uh, for controller design we need to define some of the parameters of a second order system uh, so let us look at uh, what are the dis different uh, correct uh, parameters uh, which uh, characterize a second order underdamped response uh, we will start with the first one which is a uh, rise time so if we draw the second order response uh, this is the ultimate value uh, what we are going to get is uh, the response so this is a typical uh, response of a second order system and uh, the rise time is defined as uh, the time uh, corresponding to this point so this time is uh, known as rise time so it is the time uh, when the response value reaches the ultimate value so ultimate value was akp so the response reaches the ultimate value for the first time it may not stay there uh, but it is the time in which it reaches there first time so if it is a controller uh, then we would want this rise time to be as small as possible because we want to move from original point to the final point as quickly as possible so that our operating point has shifted it may not have stabilized but it is still shifted to the new point the next term uh, we define is known as an overshoot so as an underdamped response overshoots the final value we want to quantify how much is the overshoot so we quantify that as if we measure this as a and if we take the ultimate value to be b then the overshoot would be defined as a over b so it tells you how much fraction of, of overshoot is happening inside the system and if this is a controlled system uh, again we would want a low value of overshoot because we don't want the response to go much beyond the designed final value so our designed operating point is let's say a k p we don't want this a to be much different from that because uh, there may be some physical limitations whether the system can not go there or it may be that uh, let's say if this is a reactor temperature uh, there may be some safety limit in terms of the catalyst which is used or explosive condition so you don't want to move too much away from the desired operating point so typically in a controller you would want uh, this uh, overshoot to be as low as possible and then the third term which we define is known as a decay ratio so it tells you how these oscillations are going to decay so if I, if I take this as c then the decay ratio would be defined as c over a so it tells you how quickly these oscillations are decaying again if this is a controlled system response then i would want or we would want that as we have reached the ultimate value you would want these oscillations to decay very fast so that the response ultimately reaches that value and stays there so again from a controller point of view you would want a low decay ratio uh, the other th th uh, term which we are going to define is known as a response time so response uh, time typically is characterized as the time uh, by which the response has reached within the plus minus 5 percent of the ultimate value so as the response is oscillating uh, we will have to wait for infinite time till it reaches exactly equal to akp uh, but all practical purposes we can say that if the response is between 95 percent and 105 uh, percent of the ultimate value akp as long as as soon as this sinusoid enters this particular tunnel uh, we will call this as the response time and this is known as the response time again if this is a controlled system response uh, we would want this response time to be as uh, low as possible 
because in that case uh, we would have uh, final stabilization of the system to the new operating point in the quicker time. So, and lastly uh, the parameter which we define uh, is the period of oscillation which is a very fundamental characteristic of any sinusoid. Uh, so, if we have this as a sinusoid then it will be the difference between any two successive peaks. So, this will be the period of oscillation. So, we have made some uh, so, I have made some comments here uh, in terms of if this is a control system response then what do we require. So, what we would want is a low rise time, we would typically like low overshoot we would also want low decay ratio. and we would also want low response time. But if you recall the responses I had shown you for under damp system as we change the damping coefficient, if I want a low rise time, if I try, try to push the response towards origin, then these oscillations are gonna get bigger. So, the overshoot is going to rise uh, increase as well as uh, the response time is going to increase. So, uh, there is always a trade off when we are trying to design a control system uh, that if we want a low rise time or a quick response to the new steady state then obviously I have to live up with a larger overshoot or decay ratio. So, we will be seeing uh, looking at more of these uh, when we look at a control system design but here I just wanted to give you some uh, glimpses of what kind of trade off is going to exist uh, when we are trying to design a response for a second order system or a control system which behaves like a under damped response. So, so summarize uh, mostly what we have seen is a second order system uh, most of the times uh, we would be getting it as a series combination of two first order capacities or first order systems. Uh, very rarely we would have something which is inherently second order. Uh, out of these parameters gain has the same significance as that of a first order system uh, where it signifies the magnification of the input. Uh, the damping coefficient represents uh, uh, how much uh, it represents the resistance to the oscillating behavior of the system and uh, we have seen that it has a very strong effect on the dynamic response. The response may show oscillations or may not show any oscillations. The critically damped uh, response is the fastest way to reach the ultimate value without overstepping it or overshooting it. Uh, if we are okay with overshooting then the underdamped response will be a faster way to go there uh, but may not. Uh, the ultimate value may not stabilize there uh, before the critically damped response. And lastly I have not given you a significance of tau yet, uh, so it is a tau we had called it as a natural period of oscillation and uh, when the damping coefficient becomes 0, uh, we have shown that the system oscillates with the radian frequency of 1 over tau or uh, the overall frequency of uh, twice pi tau. So when uh, damping coefficient is equal to 0, then we had shown that the response oscillates and the final period of oscillation, so this is period of oscillation, in that case is equal to twice pi tau. So, it is, so tau has a significance in terms of the period of oscillation when there are sustained oscillations. also known as natural oscillation and therefore uh, this tau was known as the natural period of oscillation. So, we will stop for the second order systems here and in the next lecture uh, we will look at the higher order systems. Thank you.